Hello, everybody. Welcome. Change the Shed. It's January 4, 2023. Uh, it's a new year. So happy new year, everybody. Um, happy to be coming at you from Colorado and where the sun is out. I'm hearing from you all over the country and the world from New York and Kirkland and um, Minnesota and Nancy's back from Maryland. Welcome back, Nancy. She said it's been a couple, a while since she saw Change the Shed. Barbara's here from San Diego and it's raining. That's excellent, I think. Winnemucca, Nevada. Julia's here from Germany. Um, Massachusetts. Bobby's here from Washington and um, Canada. Jean's here from Texas. Catherine from Quebec. Karen from Washington State. Renee from Massachusetts. Um, Elaine is right down the road from me in Johnstown, Colorado. We can almost say it's Fort Collins, but I, not quite. Um, Cheryl's here from Rhode Island. Uh, Victoria's here from Healdsburg. Leslie from Vermont. Hilly's from here from the Netherlands. Marlena from Texas. Um, I'm happy you're all here for a new year. It is another... Uh, Turn around the sun, right? January's just a new day, but it's also maybe a chance to start over again. Um, Susan's here from Pittsburgh. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm so happy you're here. I, um, yeah, over the holidays, it's easy to lose track of what's going on. So, um, Reeves is here from Maryland, and Pat from Ontario, and Paula from uh, Northumberland, UK, Donna from South Carolina. It's fun to see you all. Um, I don't have that many announcements to, announcements. I like to announce what's going on in my world. Um, I will be back next week, January 11. So that is uh, just one week from today. And then I will be teaching a retreat, which actually goes from like Wednesday to Wednesday. So I won't be back again in January. The next one after next week will be in February. So just watch the website at the, that you can't see behind my <laughs> photo there, tapsyweaving.com. Just watch um, the Change the Shed page for when I'll be back in February or subscribe to my newsletter, Tapestry Picks, which is a good way to find out what I'm doing. The other things I'm doing this month, it's January, time for new stuff. Um, I'm doing a collaboration with Just Yarn, which is that thing right there. <laughs> Tapestry Discovery Box is what it's called, and it's a subscription course that goes with Array Yarn from Just, and that is launching on January 11. So one week from today, Just doesn't have it up on their website yet, but you will register through their website. And I will be doing an ongoing course, which will have techniques and a project suggestion every three months. It's quarterly. So it'll be January, April, July, and October. And each, so each box will come with um, seven colors of array yarn and a project and a bunch of videos from me. You know that I'm not able to do things. Uh, <laughs> I like to give you a lot of information. So there will be a nice um, video or two about a technique and then we'll practice using that technique in a project. It's gonna be really fun. The first one is about weft bundling. So um, I think it's gonna be a really fun thing to do and we'll have uh, community interactions and stuff um, right in the course. So it'll be a great way to get to know each other over time. And who else is here? Donna, I said, from South Carolina. Linda from Maine and Highland Ranch, right down the road, Verena. Um, Judy's here from BC, Canada. Uh, Robin, um, we're just here again for a regular Change the Shed, Robin. I just didn't really, um, I announced it in the last Change the Shed, but I, um, I didn't have a newsletter last week and I didn't expect this many of you to show up actually. So maybe my last minute Instagram post <laughs> reminded you. Um, welcome Carolyn from the UK and Michelle from Georgia and Jessica's here from Illinois. Um, today she's in Illinois anyway. <laughs> so anyway, that's the Tap Street Discovery Box from GIST. Again, you will sign up. There is a page on my website about it so you can find out more and there will be a link to where to sign up 
on January 11 through Just Yarn's website. They are managing all of the commerce, so you will sign up through them and then you'll have access to the course um, through me. This is um, the colors for the first box actually in that photo. So every box will have different colors. So you will make a really nice collection of array yarn if you decide to do it each quarter. Yes, Nan is asking if the course is on PathRite. Yes, it is. The course will be hosted on PathRite. Um, and there will be live Q and A's every quarter as well as um, community interaction stuff. Um, we'll all be on PathRite. Um, hi, Eva from Spain. And um, let's see what else I have. Oh, the other thing this month, I am do. If you're not the Tapestry Discovery Box isn't the thing for you. The other live thing I'm doing starting this month is Design Solutions One. So if you're interested in designing for tapestry. Um, I'm running DS1, which is a class I first ran in 2020, running it again live um, starting next week, actually. Actually, you can get in today. It's not um, time limited. I'm not dripping the class. So if you sign up for it, it's all there right now. You can see all of the content. But I'll be doing um, live Q&As every month, as well as some other live interactions in the Pathrite class. So if you want some more incentive to actually work through the class, sometimes it's a lot of fun to see what other people are doing and just to get the momentum from other people working on the same material at the same time, then now is the time to do it. It's six months long. Um, every module, there's six modules. There's an interview with um, a famous tapestry weaver about their design skills, uh, how they design for tapestry. And there are, um, portions about design and color theory and um, book recommendations and just a whole lot of stuff. So there's a lot of information on my website if you want to find out about Design Solutions 1. But I would, if you want to do it, this is a really great time because I'm running it live and I probably won't run this class live again for a few more years. So it's a great way to get that community um, incentive to actually do the design work. Uh, Robin says, does this mean we have access to the discovery box as long as you have your business running? Robin, no, that is something we've been going back and forth about. This is a different kind of class. It's a subscription. So like all subscriptions, you will lose the material if you end the subscription. If you subscribe, you get all the past courses in the Tapestry Discovery Box, but you don't. Um, and we're talking about this. Um, but if you're not paying for the class, the only way to pay for the class is to be part of the subscription. So if you stop, and there's new material every quarter. So when you stop paying, you lose it. We are talking about um, potentially giving you some extra time with your material. If you haven't finished, you know, the month or the quarter or whatever, um, you'll get some extra time to do that if you dis decide you don't want to subscribe anymore. But um, it's different than my other classes, which are you get access forever. This is a subscription model, and you get access as long as you subscribe. Um, yes, Verena, if you've already taken Design Solutions 1, it's a good opportunity to jump back in and join up with the live class. Um, no, Marlena asked if we have to buy another saffron loom. The um, package only includes yarn. It does not include looms or anything else, so it's just the class and the yarn. And you have to buy everything else, of course, just carries a lot of the things you might need, but you can use whatever loom you want. You don't have to use a saffron. Um, I think I did demonstrate the first quarter on a saffron, but I'll be demonstrating on lots of different looms. I am definitely not saying you have to use a Mirex loom of any kind um, for that box. Um, yeah, no, um, the loom is not part of it. And I did that on purpose. I didn't want people to be locked into like buying specific equipment. You can use whatever you have. Um, Carol um, is asking if you already have Design Class 1, will you have access to the live? You, It's a new cohort. Carol, just please email me and I will set you up. Anyone who has taken Design Solutions 1 in the past, there's a new cohort for the live thing. So if you want access to the new cohort that I'm doing the live stuff in, it's not going to happen in your old cohort. If you signed up in 2020, you won't see it there. So please email me and I will set you up. Recommended level of experience for the Just Yarn Box, Reeves is asking. Um, 
you can't be a beginner. You can't know nothing. I'm not going to go over warping. I'm not, I'm happy to talk about materials and all of that. Of course, we'll talk about whatever you want to, but um, you have to be able to warp a loom and sort of know the basics of tapestry weaving. I, if you've taken my introduction to tapestry weaving or a similar class, or you've read my book and done a bunch of those exercises, you'll be fine. I just don't want anybody who knows nothing about tapestry weaving um, to sign up and think they're going to learn that because I don't, um, you know, I'm trying to keep the material enough that you can easily do it in three months. I want it to be fun. I don't want it to be overwhelming. And I definitely um, am not going to cover like how to warp a loom and what meet and separate is and those kinds of things I expect you to know. But other than that, you can be a beginner. You just can't be like right out of the box beginner. It's a great question. Um, okay. Nice. Thanks. Thanks to y'all for your questions. I'm, if I missed any, I apologize. Pop them in again. Um, oh, Melissa's here from Asheville. Hey, Ma Melissa. Um, yes, Donna, great way to use your GIST gift card. I think that is true. I'm pretty sure that they will honor that. Great. I don't I don't think I, I if I missed anybody, any other questions, just pop them in again. Um, good. I oh the only last thing on my list to tell you is that I need to get rid of these books. I need to sell them. And if you want one, they are um, on a small sale on my website and I will sign them for you untangled. It's a book of tapestry techniques and it's super cute. Um, just a fun book. So trying to move these books in the next few months, if you want one, they will not be around forever. I do have quite a few left though. So you know, someone who needs one on my website under shop. Awesome. Well, today I did actually intend to have a whole new tapestry started, but I do not because the last couple of weeks are a blur of traveling to see family and we got home late last night. So um, instead, I do have a new tapestry, but it is uh, a, a companion piece to the gnome from December. I'm doing a lady gnome. So I started um, this project on the road and I've not gotten very far as you will see. So we can, um, you'll, you can see what it's like to start a new project today. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mary BW from Chicago. Um, someone asked, is the subscription for one year or ongoing for years? We don't know that yet. We will do it at least for a year and it's by the month. So the subscription is, I mean, by the box. We're talking about the tapestry discovery box again. The subscription is by the quarter. So there's a new course content and a new box four times a year. And we'll do it at least for a year. We'll see how people like it. If it works out well, we'll keep doing it. If it doesn't work out well, then it will be for a year, but you only pay for um, you know, you pay by the quarter and you get the content and the box for the quarter. So um, you can decide every quarter if you want, if you want to continue um, subscribing. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, at this point, we don't know how long we'll do it. I hope we keep, I hope it goes great and we'll just keep doing it. It'll be a great community of people. So my, and I anticipate that it will be ongoing for a long time, sort of like Change the Shed has been. Um, only we'll more directly be interacting about what you're working on instead of sort of whatever I'm doing. So it, yeah, it will be a really nice community thing to talk about what everybody's working on, um, you know, color, material, design skills, um, how to use um, different colors together. I'm sure there'll be a lot of color theory stuff just because Array is such a great yarn for weft bundling. And the first box is actually about weft bundling and what happens when you mix different colors. So um, it'll be really fun to get a lot of ongoing conversation about that stuff. All right, let me, um, let's work on this uh, little gnome thingy here. Um, this is, here's my uh, lady gnome. <laughs> After messing around for a long time with um, designs, I did this. This is actually quite complicated for eight EPI, and it remains to be seen whether this area in the middle uh, looks like a gnome or not. This guy was a little less complicated, so we'll see what happens 
<laughs> with this one, I may regret the decision. I could have made the set a little bit narrower, but I kept it the same. So I am right here. Well, here. I'm just building up the sides of this little um, bottom. I did originally have feet on this little lady and decided that there's only so much. I want to put in eight ends per inch. This is um, this is actually Harrisville Shetland, which is a little bit thin for this set, but it is yarn that I dyed. I painted this yarn in a knit blank and I used it at the bottom of this. It's a variegated yarn. And so I wanted to use it on this one as well so that they sort of matched. So I'm filling in, you can just see where the curve is here. I dotted this on actually right before we started with, um, this is what I use to mark on my warps. The industrial Sharpie is, um, washes, wash fast and light fast. So it is, the wash fast thing is what you want. You don't want it to run when it gets wet. So I recommend these over the older, I used to use these, but Sharpie no longer guarantees these permanent markers are actually permanent. So I went to these for my tapestry. And you might see in some of my older videos in the Warp and Weft class that um, I'm using the plain Sharpie. That has changed in the last five years or so. So I'm just picking up the warps that I need this to go through. Let's move this. And creating this little, I think I will go under this one. This little curve. I know now we're, it's January, we maybe shouldn't be weaving gnome. Gnomes seem like Christmas things to me, but there are people who do gnomes all year. you probably see that these guys again next Christmas. 350 some days from now. Hope you all had nice December and that we're ready to clear the air and move into a new year. So here I'm just building up, the little curve goes like this, and I'm building, so the curve is here, and I'm just building up the side, and I'll build up the other side, and then I'll outline that middle part. Let's see, the last one was here. Hopefully you all have gotten some weaving done. I thought hard last week about doing a tapestry diary this week, this year, like the kind of tapestry diary where you add a little bit every day. And had I decided to do that, that's probably what you would be seeing today. But yet again, every year I think about it. And this year, another year I decided it's not for me this year. But hopefully some other of you are doing some sort of ongoing weaving that keeps you engaged every day. I will be doing shorter diaries actually, um, already working on one for Summer of Tapestry, which will be in May. And uh, that will be a shorter um, a shorter uh, project not a uh, year long so when I set this up this is the problem with the set can you see here how this is coming up here so if I make I can make her body go up this warp or up this warp and which do you do if I go out 
Let's see how big I made the other one. One, two, three, four. This guy was nine, but his hands was a, were a little different. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's already ten. I think I'm going to stick with where it is. Um, which means that the edge will be on this warp where that last step is. Okay. Thing like orienting, reorienting myself. So I'm going to weave a couple more so I don't forget that and have to revisit that decision in 10 minutes. This will be the edge. Oh, Catherine asked, what's a tapestry diary? That's a great question. Um, this is something that lots of people have done this kind of art diary thing where you do, you'll see them like the 100 Days Scotland does one or 100 Days whatever, 100 Days Project, where you do, you make some kind of art every day. So a tapestry diary is generally something that you set up with sort of rules at the beginning of the year. Usually you start them at the beginning of a year. Although you don't have to, you could start it on April 27 if you want to. Uh, and then you weave, you know, you sort of follow whatever rules you set up and weave. It's something to make you weave every day. Sometimes they're like marking things like people will look at the daily temperature and have a code of whatever color they weave. Or um, some people will do random things like roll a die and then the color that that corresponds to is what you weave that day. Or you could weave squares or, you know, any form. That's sort of up to you. But um, the idea is that it's just something that you go to and weave a tiny bit every day just to get yourself weaving. Tommy Scanlon has done this for years. And if you don't know, if you haven't seen her Tapestry Diaries, go to her website, uh, T-O-M-M-Y-E-S-C-A-N-L-I-N. -E and hers are beautiful. She just pulled off her 2022 one, obviously last week. And it is gorgeous. She is um, started her diaries by doing the square, sort of little square thing. But in recent years, she's been doing a focus picture every month. So there'll be 12 pictures and then surrounded by um, squares or stripes or something. All right, I think this side is good. And then I'm also comparing this to this other little guy wanting to get the sides about the same. I have a little bit farther. Hmm. Let's see. I maybe don't want this to go all the way up to this is her hair. So I'm always thinking about value. The hair is going to be let's see I made notes here. I wanted to make the hair a mix of I think it's these two. Yeah, these are two of the marigolds. And so I want to think about the background color and how that is going to interact with the different forms and whether the values are going to allow a form to pop forward. If I make the hair the same color or the same value as the background, then the they'll blend together and you won't see them as well. Although I am going to use some outlining like I did with this little guy. So that actually helps. Um, and I think I am going to do the um, background blue again. So that will mean that Let's see what color blue. I didn't even write the hair, the um, colors down for the sky. Hold on. I think I used these two. This is sapphire three and this is sapphire two. Yeah, I think I used these two. So will the values of those work together or not? Probably. But if I start the blue before the hair, I think the hair will show stand out better. So all of that is to say, I think before I get up to the hair, I want the blue to start. So this is probably where I'm going to stop this. Not because it's the end of my piece of yarn, I promise. But I'm going to pigtail it here so that I remember, OK, I wanted to stop there because I'll come back to it later and keep weaving. And then I'll be like, wow, I messed that up. Um, 
Yeah, Judy's doing a tapestry dyer this year. That's great. Um, Marlena asked about summer tapestry. Yep, I did that class last year um, in the summer. Actually, you can still sign up for it. It was a prompt-based class. Um, let me wind this while I'm talking about it. This I'm going to take this from, I'm going to pull off as much as I want because it's variegated and start winding the bobbin from the other end so that this end matches what was down here um, instead of the other way around. I don't, I'm just guessing how much I need. Um, Summer Tapestry was a prompt based class that was six weeks and I did it in June and July last summer. It was so much fun. Basically, I gave everyone a, a prompt. There's like a prep week and then I gave everybody a prompt to follow for what to weave for that week. It's experience based. So it was something from your environment. And then um, we had live Q and A's every week to talk about. Did we do that? No, we had live typed. We had a couple live Q and A's beginning and end. And we had live typed meetings in the class every week which was really fun. So I'll do something similar next um, this year, but I'm going to start, it's this year now, 2023. I am going to do summer room tapestry starting the end of May um, for various reasons. I need it to mostly fall in June. So we'll be doing that this year. Okay, there's my bobbin. And I am, I'm going to match the shed. So now I'm thinking about which direction does the bobbin need to go in the shed. This in, uh, is this the next shed? Yeah. In the last shed, this one was going this way. So in this shed, this bobbin would be going this way and I want this one to go this way. So I'm going to start at the outside. This is because the shed matters for filling this in. I want to fill this in with one bobbin. I want it to weave all the way across. So I need the, um, yes, I think that's right. I need the um, things on either side to be in mean separate. We'll find out in a minute if that is what is going to work. All right, and my last, here's where my last thing was there. I think summer tapestry was the favorite, my favorite thing that I taught last year. So I think a lot of you might agree with that. It was really, um, it was so much fun. Someone do it again. Okay, I'm just stepping these back gradually. Let's see, there's a step, there's a step. This is Shetland, so it's thin. I usually use Highland at API. So these steps are gonna be lower, which is what I, you know, I want it to be, be fairly smooth. So because this is Shetland, I can step back on every warp here and I think it will work out fine. That's one of those things about how materials interact with um, your set that is something to, you know, consider as you're working on your forms. I normally wouldn't use a yarn this thin by itself. I would double the Shetland at this set, but for small pieces, it'll work out all right.
Yes, Nan is asking um, about, I was talking about summer of tapestry. There will definitely, Nan, there will always be different prompts for this year will be, um, I'm not rerunning the same class. I'm making a whole nother. It'll be like season two, or I don't know if I'll call it season two, but it'll be a completely different class this year. Will definitely not be the same prompts. Okay. Oh, see, now I'm gonna have the same question on this side. What did I say, nine or 10? I might've said 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, yes. I think I said 10. 10 warps wide. So that'll be the edge. And now I'll just weave up even with that. And then we can do the outline. Sometimes with um, weft, I'll actually count the sequences so that I know I get them even on each side. This yarn is so thin for this set that it's that's going to be hard to do without pushing it all up. So I'm just going to guess. And as long as it's close visually, it won't matter. No one will know if I didn't match it exactly. I go one more. Yeah, Michelle is commenting on the um, variegated yarn. I think it's a lot of fun to use a variegated yarn. This is one of my goals for the next couple of years in my own work is to use more um, dye pot manipulations for the yarn. So those of you in the dye class will, I promise, we'll be seeing more of that um, kind of fun painting. And I'm sure you'll see it on Change the Shed too, where I'm playing around with yarns that have been um, dyed differently. Not, um, they're not immersion dyed. So immersion dyed is like this yarn is a solid color. So the whole thing of yarn is dipped in the, in the vat and it's all the same color. And um, this, whereas this is painted, and so the colors change. So fun way to weave where you get color changes without a lot of manipulation. It's uh, kind of fun. Um, Nan is asking, how is painting different than dyeing? Um, basically, I just mean that uh, in this case, I used a knit blank. So I have a knit machine, knitting machine, and I knitted out a big piece of fabric and I laid it out and I painted the um, the dye. I'm using the same dye. So the word painting maybe is um, confusing. I'm, I'm dyeing the yarn using a painting technique. So I'm using the same dye, the same principles, the same acid, the same heating, all of that. It's just that I'm applying it to the fiber in a different way. Um, Hi, Barbara, if you could, um, I will look for your email. I'm sorry that I didn't respond, but I can't respond right now live. I'm happy to um, respond to that via email. My classes are always open and you're welcome to join. And if you're having trouble getting in, I'm super happy to help you. Um, if you could just email me again at hello at RebeccaMazoff.com. That's my email, hello at RebeccaMazoff.com. I will get back to you. Uh, my pie bloom marina is, I'm just going to show you this because I have the camera set for this focus, but these are foam yoga blocks. They're great because they're lightweight and they, um, they don't move around. They're a little bit uh, grippy. So I have some wood ones too, and these are much better. So they sort of keep the loom in place. I have two of them. They're, these are by Gaiam, G-A-I-A-M, but I think if you went to Target or something, they would have these foam blocks. 
you could use anything. I mean, honestly, just like some piles of books with like a piece of a yoga mat or, or that grippy stuff you use for shelves. Those are great. Like if you go to the kitchen store, that shelf liner stuff that's grippy, um, that stuff's fabulous to use for looms. It's cushiony and it could, you know, you could use a stack of books, put a piece of that over it, and it would have the same effect as the yoga blocks. No need to like buy something new, but that um, grippy shelf paper stuff that's pretty inexpensive is awesome for all kinds of different loom things. Um, okay, great, Robin. Yeah, the array yarn is really fun. Okay, so I'm going to end this scissors. And I'm again going to pigtail it so I know. This warp is a little bit floppy and the cotton seam twine warp will, this is a fringeless for salvage warp. So the warp is right here. It's still a little bit, this is fly line backing, which doesn't tend to change much, but the warp it seems to have gotten a little looser over the last week. And I find that the cotton, so I'm tightening the sides of the, um, the sides of the loom with the threaded rod. If I tighten these up, the warp will get tighter. Um, I find that the cotton seam twine does um, relax a little bit over time if it's under tension. So I often have to tighten it a little bit. Okay, we got that done. Now I'm going back to my other little guy here. I don't think I did a split weft. Let me look. Oh, I sure did. I can tell here that because there's just one strand of the blue that I did do a split weft. Um, here to make this line smoother. So I'm going to do that again. And I'm just going to put it in the same shed. Because this weft is so thin, I don't have to have another um, shed where I split the two. The, the weft is too thin for this set, so there's enough room to add another piece of yarn and I'm going to pigtail that one also. So those two yarns went in the same shed. Pat, that's funny. Finally, my yoga blocks find a use. <laughs> yeah. I actually do use my yoga blocks, and so I've considered buying another set for the weaving studio, but I just bring them back and forth at this point. So many, only so much room for more tools, so. Uh, but yeah, that's funny. If you're not using yoga blocks for yoga, use them for this. Perfect. Um, Marla is asking about, it's a good question, Marla. She's asking about why I don't use the bobbin as a beater. It's just a habit, Marla. Most people who use tapestry bobbins, if they're using them on upright looms and they're hanging, they're absolutely using this as a bobbin. I know that it's frustrating to people who see the habits I've developed over 20 years and they feel like I'm inefficient. That's okay. It's how I do it. You do it your way. Um, I don't use the bobbin a whole lot for beading. Sometimes I do. You can. That's what it's intended for. I don't know if that's helpful at all, but um, I'm going to put an outline with black like I did on the other guy. Um, so yeah, I know some of you, I've experienced that from you before. Some of you are frustrated by the fact that I don't use my tools correctly, but I hopefully teach in my classes in my book how to use them correctly. And when I'm weaving on Change the Shed, I'm just going to do it the way I do it for real. And so that's just hopefully an encouragement for you all to do whatever you want, whatever works for you, for what equipment you have. There's such a wide variety of tapestry equipment and tools and materials and everything you do changes when you change those variables. Different loom means different materials, different way of weaving. Same thing with different, you know, if you're do, using different weft, you're probably going to do things differently for various reasons. And there's no way that I can like make all of that clear. Here I could use a bobbin, especially if you're weaving up in shapes. So 
Um, mostly I used the bobbin in this case because it was easier to carry it through the shed. Um, and it protects the yarn from getting frayed. If you pull yarn through a closed shed, the yarn is gonna get completely fuzzy. Um, but uh, these were woven flat, and so it's far easier for me to just use this little tool that's square at the end to beat it in nice and evenly than to use the bobbin which doesn't beat a straight line in evenly. But in this case, it's curved. So sure, I might use the bobbin to beat that in because I'm weaving a shape. So that might be something that would be helpful, Marla, is to think about how am I weaving if I'm weaving it in a shape? Yeah, maybe I am gonna use the bobbin tip. It's just what materials and tools are you using? So here, yeah, sure, I could use a bobbin to weave that in, to sort of tap that into place. Hope that makes sense. It's not that I, you know, yeah. I don't need to keep going on that. I think y'all get the idea of, I do what I do for various reasons that have to do with the tools and the materials that I'm using. I'm not trying to be inefficient. This is the most efficient way for me to weave at the moment with the shapes that I'm doing. Okay, so now we're gonna do a color. We're gonna fill that in with her little dress here, which I have these two colors. Do you make it more complicated and do stripes like this little guy or Maybe I'll do stripes so they match. Let's see, it's already 11 minutes after. How does that happen? Um, <laughs> congratulations, Bobby, happy birthday. Her husband just ordered her the Untangled book. Um, oh yeah, Karen, here, I'll show you this. Karen's asking, how do you handle the back of the piece when you're all done? Um, I have a lot of information about finishing in the Warp and Weft class, especially all of the classes that are for beginners have finishing information, but you'll see the back of this little guy is a real mess. Part of this is I was doing demi dues and using some floats there, um, but a lot of the, I've taken care of a lot of the ends on this. I'm in the middle of doing the finishing. Um, and they are, you'll see here that I've run them under the weft briefly and then cut them off. If I've spliced them, I've just cut them. Um, they seem to stay pretty well with the just yarn. And let me just see if there's any other examples in here of splicing that you can actually see. Here's a splice. So these yarns I know I spliced because of how they're spaced. And I would just, I actually don't cut the array or the um, Weaver's Bazaar. I tend to leave a little bit longer because they're a little bit Slicker, the array does pretty well at grabbing. I don't want the ends to poke to the front. This piece will be mounted, and so it's unlikely once it's mounted that that will happen, but if I was using a much fuzzier yarn, like I generally use Harrisville Kohler Singles for my big works, when I splice, I just cut them right off because they're it's a very fuzzy yarn and it all grabs together and stays put. Um, Um. Oh, Marla, I'm so sorry. I see what you're saying. Marla is asking, she's actually asking a completely different question than what I was talking about. You always, a tapestry bobbin is always used like this with the butt um, round end going through first. She's asking, why don't we do this? Um, you can, and on small... Why don't you use the point to pick up the warps? On a small weaving like this that's in your lap, it probably doesn't matter. Um, if this were vertically, most tapestry looms with that where people are using bobbins are woven on um, vertically. So the loom is big, it's in front of you, and the bobbins are all hanging down. It's a very, and if you wouldn't use the bobbin at that angle to pick up the warps, um, it's much more efficient to use your shedding mechanism to do that and then pass the bobbin through. The other reason is that the point of the bobbin can pierce a warp and make it break. So those are the reasons why you always put the ball in through first. On a small loom like this, whatever, use the tool however you want to. <laughs> um, d don't pierce your warps um, because they can break and that's a bummer, but um, it doesn't matter. Uh, 
shelf liner stuff. Um, okay, yeah. So that's the that's the answer. That's my answer there. Again, it goes back to equipment and how you're weaving and that kind of thing. Um, um, Don is asking, why do I splice the yarns? I think um, uh, autocorrect um, is an interesting thing. I will tell you, I see the most interesting autocorrect for the word Mirex. I know if anyone says mirror or anything that starts with an M and they're talking about looms, it probably means Mirex because I've seen some really crazy autocorrects for that word. Um, why don't I splice the yarn, Donna? I do splice the yarn. Um, oh, why do I splice the yarn? Um, because it holds the little tails together and I can cut them off and I don't have so many tails on the back. I want to decrease the number of tails. This is especially helpful um, for large format work. On small format work, sometimes you don't have room to do the splicing, but it does help because the fewer ends you have, the less impact you have with this kind of thing. Um, hold on. The less impact you have with all of these tails. This whole thing was covered with tails, and if those were all there, and I tried to mount this piece, it would be, it would look like this. It would look like it was stuffed. So I need to somehow flatten that out. A lot of people will just trim them to an inch or two and then leave them as a little bit of padding there. And that's also fine. I talk about finishing extensively in my Warp and Weft class. And there's also information in my book, um, the Art of Tapestry Weaving book. Um, Okay, cool. Um, I don't know how it's already uh, 1116. I talked too much at the beginning and I was going to get this little lady started. So watch my Instagram this week and I will um, show you what I'm doing with this little um, gnome tapestry. I'm going to put in the uh, little um, dress. I think I'm going to do stripes like I did on this guy, but I'm going to make them curved instead of straight. We'll see if that works. I'll let you know. Um, yeah, okay. Any other questions you all have today? Um, otherwise, I will be back next week on January 11, Wednesday. And we'll see what I have. It might be this little lady gnome, or I do actually have um, a couple new projects I want to do on Change the Shed this year. So that will be fun if I get another bigger project going that you can watch over a few months. That will be that will be cool. We'll see if it happens. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone, for showing up. There are a bunch of you here today, even though it's a weird holiday week, and I really appreciate it. Keep weaving. I hope that those of you, if you're doing tapestry diaries or something, I'd love to hear about it um, or just what you're going to weave this year. You can always use that hashtag. Oh, it's not up there. Hashtag change the shed is always a fun one if you use Instagram. Or if you're in my Facebook group for the online classes, you can post what you're doing. That would be really fun. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody. And it's really fun to connect back in in a new year. Yay, 2022. Um, we will connect again next week. And then uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, y'all. Have a super great January. And I'll see you on the 11th. Bye-bye.